Welcome back to English Einstein. Today we'll be looking at Ozyman Diaz in preparation for your English Lit Paper 2. For those of you that don't know me, I am an AQA English GCSE examiner and teacher and I run an English tuition company. Today we'll be discussing Percy Shelley's poem Ozyman Diaz. Let's firstly talk about the poet himself. Percy Shelley was a romantic poet in the early 19th century. He was known for his radical political views and his poetry reflected his revolutionary ideas. He was part of the Romantic movement, a reaction against the Enlightenment. They believed in the power of imagination, celebrated nature and revolution. They denounced science, industrial revolution and monarchy. Now on to Ozymandias. It was first published in 1818. It tells the story of the traveller who comes across the ruins of a statue of ancient Egyptian pharaoh Ramesses II, also known as Ozymandias. The poem is a sonnet, a 14-line poem that follows a specific rhyme scheme. These are usually love poems, so it could have been used to show Ozymandias' love of himself or his love for power. Ozy means heir, Mandias means to rule, so it implies He's the ruler of all that breathed, or the ruler of air slash nothing. The first word I want us to write down for this lesson is futile, which means pointless. Shelley wanted to show that human power is futile. Next word, hubris, which means arrogant pride. Shelley wanted to show that hubris was futile. Next word, transient, lasting for a short time. Shelley wanted to show that human power is transient. Question we're looking at today then, how does Shelley present power in Ozymandias? Of course, in your exam, you have to compare Ozymandias to one other poem, but let's just focus on Ozymandias for now. I have labelled the three different speakers in the poem and some techniques. You've got the metaphor shattered visage. The statue is a metaphor for Ozymandias' power decaying over time. You've got the alliteration cold command, exaggerating the harshness of Ozymandias. You've got the imperative look on my works, emphasising his power and superiority. Then you've got the ironic sentence, nothing beside remains. Then finally you've got sibilance down here, sand stretch far away, which reflects the sounds of wind on sand and creates the feeling of extensive space and further exaggerates the insignificance of humans. The first quote we're going to look at then. Half sunk a shattered visage lies, whose frown and wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command. There we've got the adjective cold, shows that he's tyrannical, a bit like maybe Scrooge at the beginning. The adjective cold shows he's tyrannical. The alliteration of cold command emphasises his harshness. Because it's harsh sounding alliteration, cold command, emphasises his harshness. The noun sneer shows the disgust that Ozymandias had towards his subjects and the feeling of superiority he had. The adjective shattered emphasises that his statue is fractured and decaying and by proxy his power is decaying. The metaphor of the statue overall in the poem shows that his power has consumed by nature. Shelley is suggesting that nature is superior to humans. Make sure you've got a picture of those or you've taken notes. Hey, what I want you to do then, use the notes that you've just made to write out this paragraph. Shelley portrays Ozymandias as a something ruler. Use one of your descriptive words from the last slide. We see this in the quote, put the quote in. In other words, the adjective cold shows this. OK, so use the sentence starters there to formulate your paragraph. Next, next quote. My name is Ozymandias, king of kings. Look on my works, ye mighty, and despair. Nothing beside remains. He's portraying himself as a god or deity when he says king of kings. He used the imperative, look on my works, because he believes he is superior, he's commanding everybody what to do, even the mighty. He clearly thinks his power is eternal, which is ironic, because here it says nothing beside remains. His power was just transient and ephemeral, didn't last for a long time. Shelley, the poet, is pointing out that this kind of hubris, this arrogance, is pointless and futile. Hubris is futile. 
Right, make sure you take a picture of the notes. We're going to use them to finish this paragraph here. Shelley portrays the arrogance of Ozymandias in the quote. Put the quote in. In other words, Ozymandias is. Use your notes for those sentence starters. In conclusion then, Shelley is showing that even the most powerful leaders will be forgotten in time. It is a reminder of the transience of human power and the importance of humility. That's all for today. I hope you found it helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. For more videos, type in English Einstein's Education on YouTube. This one in particular you might find interesting, the English language exam made easy or English language creative writing.